and welcome to RVTravelTV.com. Today we have an interview with Rob and Jan from um, SprinterTour.com, two amazing individuals that are taking once a once in a lifetime trip um, across the United States to visit uh, 50 national parks in seven months. Um, we caught up with them in Sacramento, California, uh, at a Mercedes-Benz dealership uh, via Skype. So here's our interview. So uh, can you do me a favor and explain a little bit about yourselves? Sure. We've uh, we've been married 35 years. In fact, our anniversary is coming up in October. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a 30-year veteran of the marketing industry and have worked in uh, several states, Canada and Europe, dragged my country or my family around to all those different places. You dragged your country too. Yeah, I dragged my country is right. Um, and we have two, uh, two adult children. Our daughter has a and son-in-law live in New Jersey. We have a two-year-old grandson with a second baby on the way. And our son lives in Ohio. So we are empty nesters. And uh, anything else you want to add? We're on an adventure. We are on a big adventure. You are on a big adventure. And if you can uh, just give us a little preview of what your adventure is for our viewers here. Oh, sure. We're. Uh, we're on a sponsored tour of 50 national parks in uh, 217 days, covering about 30,000 miles. Um, Two, 217 days. That's yes. like six months. Less than, more, more than six months. Seven months. Seven, Seven months. months. One week. That's, correct. That's right. Yeah, my yeah. math skills have gone down. <laughs> it happens. It does happen, doesn't it? <laughs> so how did you come about... To, to do this amazing trick, I mean, what was the, what was the genesis behind it? Well, we uh, we were living in Denver, and we knew we were going to leave that city shortly. And we were thinking of all the neat parks that we had never been to, even though we'd been there a couple of years. Typically, not visiting things in your own backyard. Right. And uh, we knew we couldn't afford to visit those parks before we left. We hadn't been to Utah hadn't been to Wyoming, um, hadn't seen half the parks in, in uh, Colorado. So Jan? I came up with the idea. I said, why don't we get an RV and tour the parks? And, then, and, then, my so, son and <clears throat> yeah, then my son and I said, well, why don't we get an RV and we'll tour all the parks? <sighs> that was before we knew there were 50 of them that you could drive to. Are you going up to Alaska as well? Yes. yes, we're working our way up the West Coast now. We'll be in Alaska the middle of August. We're going to every wilderness national park that right. you can drive to. Yeah. And in the U.S. So and you you awesome. hit like Yosemite and um, you have gone to Bryce and. Uh, uh, yeah, we started in uh, started in Rocky Mountain and then we did the the Grand Circle down through uh, Grand Canyon over to Petrified Forest and then down to Big Bend. Over through Saguaro and Death Valley and Joshua Tree, and then up. Now we're going up the West Coast, and we'll That's wind amazing. up. Flat. We won't get to. We're coming back through Alberta. We'll come in back into the U.S. through Glacier, and that's when we'll we'll do um, Yellowstone and Grand Tetons and all that. So. Yeah, you know it's, a, it's funny because uh, uh, we've done some of those parks already. You know, and. Uh, you're going to be amazed with Yellowstone because it is a mix of like four parks you've just seen, you know, and it's it's so unusual. It's just it's it's amazing. So that's what we'll have we've... to do another interview when you when you reach there. So okay, be happy to do that. <laughs> okay, so now why did you pick uh, the Airstream Sprinter uh, as your platform? Well, we didn't really pick them. Um, we we realized that the RV companies would get a lot of proposals to sponsor people, give them an RV. Um, and we also knew a lot of it would be pretty amateurish. So because of my, my marketing background, we put together a, um, a big idea concept and then we wrote a marketing plan around that. And we went down, to, it just so happened that there was an RV show in uh, Denver the first week in January. So we, we printed up a bunch of these proposals and went down there and talked to um, RV manufacturer representatives, knowing full well we wouldn't 
we wouldn't get a sponsorship through that, but we would right. get some information. Yeah, get some traction going. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody, everybody was very encouraging. They loved the idea. Um, and I went back two days later because the the real factory guys weren't there the first couple of days. And when I went back the second time, everybody that we had seen the first time had read the marketing plan and was asking us questions about it. So we knew we had something really good. So uh, one of the guys there was a real big help to us. And he said, look, I'm going to give you the names of five presidents of RV manufacturers, but you can't tell them I sent you to them. That's amazing. Yeah, we said, okay. So I had a friend in um, Orlando who I respected a lot. I sent him a copy of the proposal. And he said, you need to send this to my son at Mercedes. And I thought, well, why would you do that? You know, Mercedes isn't in the RV business. Well, they make, yeah, they make the chassis. And he said, yeah, he said, no, no. He says, you need to send it to him. So we sent it off to him. And uh, their VP of marketing called us at our apartment in Denver and said, um, where are you guys on this sponsorship thing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm actually printing the letters to the five presidents right now. We're going to put them in the FedEx tonight so they get them tomorrow. And he said, could you hold off for a couple of days? He said, we, I think we might be able to do something here. Oh, yeah, exactly. So I said, oh, we can, only, we can only hold off for a couple of days because we're going to leave on April 28th. We don't have much time to get this thing together. He said, I'll move fast. Don't worry. So within a week, he got back to us and said, um, we're going to sponsor you. And uh, he had, he had uh, contacted Airstream and the two companies partnered to um, outfit a Sprinter van as an RV with Airstream. And that's so, it. so they they it's basically your free use of their RV. Is that the is that the deal? Yeah. What they did was they said, okay, we're going to loan you this RV for 217 days. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is amazing. Got that right. <laughs> and he told us when he called back and said, okay, you're sponsored. He said, by the way, you you are one lucky guy. I said, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said. Um, the reason we want to sponsor you is we're taking the, the Sprinter brand back from Dodge. Really? Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna start marketing it under the Mercedes Benz badge again. Because this the merger between Mercedes or Daimler Benz and Chrysler had been dissolved. Uh, so you know that that makes sense because um, there is a lot of uh, other platforms that had a difficulty getting chassis. For right. the production line for different, you know, RVs like the Solera and basically all the Class C diesel are ba based on that Dodge Sprinter Mercedes-Benz engine. So right. that makes total sense. So they saw it as a platform, a marketing platform to make a lot of noise about the Sprinter. Oh, yeah. Airstream was a perfect match for them from a branding perspective. So top quality, top quality. Right. And then we had the key, one of the other key things was we had the skill set to deliver content. I'm a photographer. I'm a writer. My wife is an extremely good organizer and um, photogenic. Well, thank that you too. Very much. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> a sweet guy. I I'm, like him a lot. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> so that that's kind of how it happened. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's just amazing. So, is this the first? RV you ever got, or is it something? We've never camped or RV'd or any of this no. ever. No. We've traveled extensively. Mm, yeah, right. I read but, the website. But never in an RV or camping. Never. So, I had all a list of questions of what kind of uh, options and stuff. You had no clue of what they get to begin with. So basically, yeah, they what happened? Delivered it. They gave us a um, top of the line, fully loaded interstate. Right. Um, so it's got pretty much everything in there that that, inter, that the Airstream can put in it. Um, so you've got really plush leather seats, uh, you know, the Corian countertops, and it, they, the interior of this thing is just gorgeous. It looks like an Airstream inside. Yeah. 
They're very uh, cool stuff that they did. Yeah, I haven't seen one, but I've seen pictures of them, and I've seen the one on your site, obviously. Yeah, if you go um, to sprintertour.com. Yeah, and if you go to the Sprinter website, sorry, the Airstream website, and click on their interstate link, they have a 360 oh, yeah. free video, yeah, app it, thing. and that's what ours looks like. Wow. Yeah, it's really cool. Very cool. Everybody who comes in there goes, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now, as a, now, do you both drive drive it, or are, Rob, you just driving it, or are you taking turns, or? He won't let go of the wheel yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> so we haven't had any stretches in the road where she, you know, she can get used to driving it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, one of these it. days, I'm going to drive it. I think let today is a good to, day. Good driving I'm day. Drive, I'm going to let her drive to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one you should let her drive to, yeah. Well, you're, you guys are, are you in Sacramento right now? Is that the deal? Yes. yes. Yeah. So Sacramento's flat. It's straight. That's right. That's I right. could be driving today. You could be driving today. I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> I see it, but I don't recognize it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so now... Have you had any after sales uh, experience with Airstream or Mercedes Benz right now? Uh, not with Airstream, but with Mercedes. This is our second dealership to visit. And uh, service is just stellar. We've never had any interaction with Mercedes before. So to show up at a dealership and be treated the way we've been treated is just uh, amazing. What a class outfit she oh, yeah, was. Exactly. And they have. Um, they're uh, very gracious and friendly and, and uh, for some reason show us a lot of respect. They're all well, very- yeah, Because you have, the, you have the letter going to the Mercedes-Benz president, so <laughs> <laughs> just flash that little baby and you're in there. I must say though that when we, when we picked up the vehicle, we went to the Airstream factory to pick up the interstate. Is that in Ohio? Yes, yeah. in yeah. Jackson- Center. 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 Ohio. We had a great tour of the factory, which yeah. is a must. It was fabulous. And they treated us great that yeah, day. Very, we very good people at Airstream. We had a great day. Yeah, they started really out at the, at the mothership, so to speak, That's and right. then yeah. uh, right. kind of sprouted your little wings and then pushed you down the line. They waved goodbye. Right. <laughs> Actually, they kind of shot us out of a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the keys to happiness in a small RV? Because it is kind of small. I mean, the living conditions, it's not like a, it doesn't have slide outs and any of that. So, yeah. so Jan, does he snore? He, you know, it's really funny. <laughs> he snored, I snore before, before we left on this trip. Before the RV. Okay. We don't snore now. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's like someone flicked a switch and said, no more of that. Oh, yeah. Because it probably reverberates. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It was a big concern of ours. You know, we sleeping again. Being, you know, in that small space. Our biggest thing is you have to be organized and everything has a place and it has to go back in that place when you're finished with it. Every, Otherwise you're tripping over it. Anybody who's anybody who's RV knows this, but it's a real eye opener to realize that you have to you have to put things back all the time yeah. you can't leave anything laying around you just have to do you have to have a routine you stick to it don't mess around just do it and i think you know it's taken me 35 years to finally get him to be a neat neck and he drives me crazy now. <laughs> i've become obsessive you forgot to put that away you didn't close that door right you know because our big things we we have so much tech things that need to be uh, recharged, you know, our computers, our phones, everything. So there's cords everywhere. And when we're finished using one, it always has to be tied up and put away in the bag that we have for it. So you know where it is. Right. Exactly. And right. The, you know, the, other, the other things that, that are key is uh, you got to be prepared to accept the bumps and the bangs with uh, good humor because you will bump and bang yourself. Oh, yeah. Especially since you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you know, right. you're just starting yeah. out. I mean, dumping the wastewater is like always a first oh. little plus in the, in the system, isn't it? It's a cake. I know it is a piece of cake. No, no, no. It's in the in the sprinter. 
in the interstate, it is it is so easy. To, we we thought that was going to be a big deal. It's right. nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Yeah, we but, we did the because, same thing when we first got ours. We um, thought that would be a hard thing to do. Yeah. And it actually turned out to be the absolute easiest thing to do. Exactly. You know, it's you know it is what it is. You know it's not flushing the toilet, but you still got to you know. But it's not this onerous, oh, overbearing right. thing. You know, the other thing for, is, don't wear a hat in the RV. <laughs> because when you wear the hat, you can't see the storage units. So you bang it. <laughs> oh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> Just take the don't, hat. Just don't wear the hat. These are things you learn. <laughs> things you learn, of course. And also, you probably learned that um, when you're in the uh, RV like this, and because ours is small as well, ours is like 19 foot, and actually it is an Airstream, but um, uh, it's the outdoors. You hang out outdoors, you know, right. when you can, as long as there's not like a billion mosquitoes or something, right. you know. But it's outdoors is basically your living room, so it, and that makes it so much better. That was one of the things we were going to mention was we don't live in the RV. We live outdoors. Right. We sleep and, and make meals in there, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so it's anything else we should share with them? That we, no, we don't want to tell you anything else. No. No, there's no other key of happiness there. <laughs> it's locked. <laughs> uh, so what did you bring that you didn't need? I would say one thing, though. Okay, good. Couple's going to do this. Make sure you're good friends. Oh, you need yeah. To be best friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. we've heard some arguing going on in other wow. in other RVs, so you want to make sure you get along. Yeah. yeah, my my wife and I were uh, were very compatible, and we do a lot of biking and things like that, hiking. And um, in fact, if you have to because you feel lethargic if you don't do it, and if you're driving every day, which you guys aren't doing, you know. But if you had to do like five days of driving or something like that, oh man, it'd just kill you. you that yeah. defeats the whole purpose. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we so, don't, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We don't actually um, spend that much time on the road because we drive from park to park and then we get to a park, we stay there. Stay there. But, but during the day, we drive into the park to get around and drive back out. Cause we really don't spend that much time on the road. Yeah, there's certain parks, like you'll find out, like, um, well, even like Grand Canyon, you had to drive around a little bit, you know, if you did the yeah. outside rim, you know, and having a small vehicle, not not small, but... Oh, it's it, small. It's, yeah, but it's it's like a, it's like a, a bigger than a van, but smaller than a, a you know, 30-foot RV or something like that, so right. you can drive it in the city, you can go with throughout the park, find parking pretty easily, and get it's, decent gas mileage as well. Yeah, we get about between 18 and 19 miles to the gallon. That's perfect. And you're, and you're right about parking. We whip, in, we whip into places and go into gas stations where people couldn't go with an RV, right. with a typical RV. Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, and it's very much like a car. Because it's a Mercedes Benz, baby. <laughs> it is. You just have to be careful not to think you're going to stop it like a car. Because it's you know, thirteen thousand pounds is a lot of a lot of weight. <laughs> now that is a V six, isn't it? A uh, 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 six cylinder three, diesel, right? Yeah, three liter. Yep. Three liter. Yeah, and it can tow what thirty five hundred pounds or something like that. Oh no, it can pull five thousand plus. Five thousand. Yeah. yeah, you can pull a car with no problem. I don't know why you pull a car, but you probably want to pull. I don't know. Maybe. Well, you what? Eh. Well, we met a we met a couple that had a Sprinter. Interstate in Zion, and they were pulling a smart car. Oh, this is, yeah, exactly. That would probably yeah, work. perfect. Just perfect. Sorry for all the noise. Oh, that's fine. It's, we thought uh, we were know, That must be you're you're next to the Mercedes Benz daycare center. <laughs> you got it. But that's what happens when you're on the road. You have to find the Wi-Fi spots. You have to do these things. You know. Um, oh. You know, and I, I, I actually just recently got a um, incredible HTC incredible phone as a smartphone, and because um, oh. we like Verizon, I tell you what, you can hook that up to your laptop. You can do whatever you want to do. You can tether it. It's 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 cool, and uh, you know, because you can't always rely on Wi-Fi, especially in parks and things like that. You know, Absolutely. it's not going to be there. So, what has been your, what have you? 
brought that, that you didn't need and what did you need that you didn't bring on this trip so far? Um, As we get back to the questions. Well, you know, when we started out, we it was it was difficult for us because we were picking up the RV in Ohio. I was packing everything in Denver and we moved furniture and all our belongings to Ohio and then picked up the RV, then went back to Denver and got what I left behind thinking, knowing, you know, I assumed what I would need because I, I had not seen the inside of the RV. So I would say probably too many kitchen things Stuff. like yeah. Tupperware that we don't use, we use baggies because it saves room. Uh, probably too many clothes, even though we don't have a lot of clothes with us, but, um, you know, we're seven months on the road, so we're carrying all different right. clients. You know, we've got winter jackets and, right. you know, a couple pairs of hiking boots. And so probably some clothes could, could have been left behind. Anything else? We're going to take a short break here while this little girl finishes coming down the stairs. <laughs> okay, she's going clomp, 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 clomp. Well, she's just having a good time. Right. No, she's, um, she's got about eight more steps to go. <laughs> Second. Um, There's a whole bunch of them going down. So have you done, you, you've done laundry already on the road and stuff at RV oh, parks. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's done every, probably once, well, once a week, you know, and you, you know, it's funny, you learn to, um, I think I wrote somewhere that I'm not out to impress anyone on what I'm wearing because they don't, they don't see me the next day. So, so what if I wear the same thing three days in a row? It doesn't matter. And nobody well, cares. Every time we go out, we say we go out for like a month or th because that's kind of, I think the most we've been out is two months. We never wear all the clothes that we bring anyways, right. you know, and I, it's just, it's crazy. So right. I, I imagine it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and things and if, my, if I was just going by myself, I'd be wearing the same thing for a month, you know, so. Right. <laughs> don't have to hear it. Yeah. yeah. Well, things we, um, so, we didn't bring. Well, oh, what didn't you bring? We didn't bring a, uh, what do you call those, insulation, the, a reflector for the windshield. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, Didn't yeah. bring one of those. Didn't bring an extra table for the grill, thinking that we could use all the picnic tables and no, a lot yeah. of the RV park, they don't like to use that. So we're actually purchasing one of those today. Yeah. Have you gone to Camping World? That Camping just World came is, is like a block down. Isn't that good? I know exactly where you are. <laughs> So, you know, Camping World is your best friend, you know, on the road, actually, because that's where you get all your, you join that little President's Club thing and uh, you get the 10% off. And they have great little things, you you know, hooks and stuff that you can use. Right. They do. Yeah, yeah, right. They it's do. a really good outfit, but we, we, ha we didn't join because we don't have to, we haven't had to buy things. Right. Because Jan is so well organized. We brought a few things too many. A couple odds and ends that we had to had to buy, um, and that's it. So, when we went and made our first purchase at Outdoor World, they told us don't don't sign up unless you're going to spend two hundred dollars. And we looked at them and said we're not spending two hundred bucks. And they said then don't join. Yeah. And we still haven't spent two hundred bucks there. Bucks, there you go. Plus, you you know, another thing is you can go to Walmart. Walmart, and, and they have the same kind of stuff for the, for the, I hate to say it, but it's true. You know, you go it to Walmart, they have the, you know, the RV section right there. So, yeah. and there's always a Walmart somewhere. There is. Absolutely. No, there is. So, so we were, we were pleasantly surprised at our, at Jan's ability to get the right amount of stuff and not have to make up for shortcomings along the way. I'm not surprised that Jan was able to do that. Look, Jan's. Jan, you go, girl. <laughs> Don't you. listen to him. And you should be driving tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. She should be in charge. <laughs> she should be in charge. Yeah, it was her idea to do this thing. That's right. So ha have you uh, had any second thoughts about your decision so far? Our only second thought is why we didn't do this sooner. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're, you're basically two months into it, right? That's right. One third, well, a little bit, a little less than one third. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So now that you're traveling on the road, right, yep. and you're part of the, you know, 
trailer environment, you know. Uh, All right. What has been the biggest surprise so far? Biggest. Is it like the people, for us, it's been uh, everyone we have met on the road is positive. They're always so upbeat. They're so happy to be alive. They're always doing something, you know, and uh, it seems to be very, very positive environment. I don't know if you've noticed that at all. or Absolutely. And yeah. we said this morning, actually sitting here, Rob picked up a newspaper and he goes, man, there's really some bad news in here. We thought we have not been clued into what's going on at all. There's an oh, yeah. awful lot of strife in the world that we don't hear about <laughs> anymore. <laughs> well, you know, and there's not much well, we can do about it, so we might no. as well be here. Yeah. yeah. That's the one thing. You, you go through that um, kind of the traveling's like water. It just happens. You flow with it, you know. You'll find yourself at one point saying, oh, it's, it's really rainy over here. Let's go over there. And we'll switch this around a little bit because you have the ability of, of doing that. And, right. and that's just an amazing thing to be able to do. And I would say, yeah, the people on the road have just been so friendly. And, you know, when even when you are not in an RV park, if you pull in somewhere, someone always chats up, oh, where are you going? Or, oh, yeah. You know, they, if you're standing at a gas station, someone's, of course, our, our thing kind of stands out. Our, yeah, our, exactly. So people always want to know what this thing is. The Sprinter Tour emblem. I mean, they did a great job. Did I mean, they? Yeah. Well, so, do you have the option of buying that after your uh, yes. trip, or does yes. It? yes, it's going to be for sale. Wow. They want the graphics off, though. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Are you asking us if we have the option of buying it? Yeah, yes. is it you part of your agreement? We do have buying. the option yeah. of buying it. Yes. Wow, that's that's good because it's used. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're keeping it in very good shape. Well, you keep it in good shape. You know the owners. Well, yeah, we do know the owner and. We are really taking good care of it. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, way better than most RVers do, we oh, think. You ha well, you know, it's... it's uh, we, we agonize over everything, especially in our trailer. We, we don't want to put any kind of... Uh, um, attach anything with screws. We did do right. some modifications a little bit, but, you know, it's very ginger. And because airstreams are kind of iconic, you know, in their yes. look. And you... It's just you want to keep that look going, you know. So, right. Yep. Okay. Well, we have a, one more question. Um, any words of advice or encouragement for those people thinking about doing what you're doing? And do you want to give up those names, those five names, and the addresses for me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a funny thing. I still have those five names. <laughs> it's for <they're>, sale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's for sale, exactly. <laughs> See me after the show, Jeff. Um, yeah, I, I th we, th we think the best advice would be to uh, stop thinking about it and get up and do it. Yeah. Um, we, we waited to do this way too long. Um, you guys are only 36. Come on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Give, give or take. Yeah. Um, even for those, you know, even I mean, we, we are really blessed that we, that we got sponsored to do this. But even if you're not sponsored to do it, find a way to get out and take a trip like this. You know, maybe not well, not as long as ours, because very few people can do, do that. Yeah. But get out and see the, the national parks. They're right in your backyard, and with the way the economy is right now, what an easy, inexpensive way to go and spend some time right here in our own, you know, own country. Right. The and the parks, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not a very, uh, patriotic person i am semi-patriotic but when i went to mount rushmore and they do the whole thing you know you go this is just amazing you know we live in an amazing country you kind of forget about it you don't you forget about the forefathers and the whole thing and everyone around us is you know just the beauty and we don't like you said you have to take advantage of it well that that was one of the big surprises um even though we've traveled a lot we we did not appreciate how vast this country is right we, oh, we've yeah. only seen you know a small portion of it maybe 20 percent right and we're just astonishing it really is you go wow I, I have one thing in um in a previous incarnation before i started to do, do this stuff um i used to fly everywhere you know for sales presentation and conferences and you're always flying over the country and you get to the you know you're, yeah you're at like you know, Dollywood or something, some convention center or McCormick Center or something. And, and um, 
you never really see the country. And then when we're driving it, you realize how beautiful the United States really is because you're, when you're seeing Snake River or wherever you're going, you know, it is just one, you just turn a corner and go, wow, you know, Utah's one giant postcard, you know? Our, our, Absolutely. Our, yeah. yeah, our most common phrase is, did you see that? Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, well, thank you so much for this interview. This is great. I, I hope you have safe travels and we'll thank you. keep in touch. We'll do the Twitter thing and okay. all that stuff. And when uh, hopefully we can do this again in a couple months and see how you uh, feel going forward. We'd love to do that, Jeff. Thanks right. for your time. Thank man. you. Thank you. That is our interview with uh, Rob and Jan from Sprinter Tour. Um, you can contact them at sprintertour.com. Um, follow you. Follow them on Facebook at uh, Sprinter Tour and also on Twitter at Sprinter Tour. And of course, you can follow RVTravelTV.com at our website and at our Twitter page and Facebook page. Thank you so much. <laughs>